Hey everyone, today's build guide is going to be on Merlin. Merlin is an Old Faith Arcanist, and you recruit him through the story near the end of Act 2 as a choice between him and Lady Morgos. I actually have a build already up for her if you want to see what she can do. But for Merlin here, he is definitely one of the strongest offensive Arcanists in the game, and certainly one of the most unique. With this build I have for him, he is hands down the highest damage dealing Arcanist in the game. Without this specific build, if you're not lucky enough to get the right pieces, or piece, as a little teaser, um, he's still very, very strong in terms of damage. The build for him is pretty simple and really straightforward, so let's get right into it. Beginning with Essences, he doesn't really need much for this build. There's only one that is absolutely mandatory, and that is the Essence of Conflagration. This grants tw <clears throat> this grants plus 20% burning damage to this hero, and that is huge for this build. And just him in general, as all of his offensive moves, or his major ones at least. Second, I gave him the Essence of Speed. He has some pretty expensive moves, and will be casting a lot of spells in a single turn, so giving him this extra AP I think is very useful for enabling more of that cooldown cycling that Arcanists are famous for with that Mindstorm ability. Now for the third essence, if he's going to be your primary Arcanist, or you're just going to be bringing him on a lot of your missions, the essence of Spellcraft can be useful to make sure he has a high enough Spellcraft stat, and you can hit all of those totem checks and discover all of those hidden treasure chests. If you're bringing someone else consistently with a 4 or higher spellcraft going into the endgame, then you're covered and he doesn't need to have this. For me, in this case, you can see it's Sir Lucan. The last essence I'm going to bring up as being somewhat relevant for this build is the essence of spell warding. It's a decent pick uh, if you really want to fill up his slots. As I mentioned before, you really don't need to, but if you're looking for something, this is good. It provides him 25% damage resistance to spell skills. This will make him more resilient to the enemy spellcasters and their counterattacks at him as they try to maneuver to get within range to hit your squishier units. Other than these, you can really put whatever you want on him and he'll be fine. Like I said, the only mandatory one really is this one and this one a little bit. For his gear, both for this build and gear in general, you really just want to be looking for anything boosting fire damage and increasing his AP. For his armor, I am using the Moonlight Halo. The immunity to stun is actually very useful, especially against things like Unseelie Axe Throwers. They have that range stun attack, and keeping him from getting stunned is useful because you want him casting spells as much as possible. That's a big component of this build, and really Arcanist gameplay in general, but especially for this build. The extra AP is for more of that spell casting, as I mentioned before, and the other two stats is really just a little bit of survivability. Now his weapon here, this is like 90% of the build. This is the core of it. Everything revolves around this. The Summer Staff Rune. It's a level 10 weapon, but its ability is just so busted. It is by far and away the highest damage you're going to be pulling off with Merlin over any raw damage stats that level 20 staffs may be offering for him. And all of that comes down to this first ability here, Burning Effects immediately deal the remaining damage and end. Wild Magic 8. This means when you trigger this Wild Magic 8, all of the burning damage that would normally occur over the course of multiple rounds gets lumped up and dealt in one single hit. This is hundreds of damage. To do this, you need to reach this Wild Magic 8 trigger, which means this effect triggers after 8 spells have been cast. This is not specific to Merlin. Anyone on your team that casts a spell counts towards this Wild Magic 8. So, Merlin's already casting lots of spells. He can reach half of this or more in a single turn really easily with his skills. But if you have a team comp that sort of synergizes with this even more, you can easily hit this in a single turn. The last two effects here is more burning damage and an extra turn of burning duration. This is just a huge damage boost to this first effect that is already pretty insane. For his remaining items, you can see I have just a couple of blue items, 
and that's because we're looking for some very specific things. We don't care about general good stats or whatever. We're looking for one of two things. This first item here adds plus one turn for burning duration. That is the entire reason why we have this. Second, plus 10 damage against burning units and plus six burning damage. Also, the only reason is why we have this. He does not have Fire Blast, and he does not have Wall of Flame. Normally, this would be a very good item for Ector, but I'm giving it to Merlin, because more burn equals more busted. For skills, we took the standard Mage Armor to give him some tankiness, the extra hit, the extra armor. In Tier 3, we took Spell Power for extra damage and range. We took Mindstorm for the cooldown cycling, and we took extra damage for extra damage, <laughs> and then long reach for more range. Going into his more specific spells, beginning with his basic attack, we have Firebolt. At base it's no different than Force Bolt, but the upgrades that matter here is Inferno, it now causes burning, which is very good, and then we, I took Overheat for some extra weapon damage. A good alternative to this is actually multiple targets, you can apply burn to three different enemies now. More enemies you have burning up, the more you can hit with that nuke when this wild magic proc happens. Illusion is a very cheap spell, which is great for that wild magic goal as well as triggering that mindstorm effect. You place a clone of Merlin somewhere within range, and it sort of has a soft taunt. While it does not actively taunt enemies, I have noticed that they do tend to prioritize attacking this illusion. I'm assuming it's because it's coded in they think it's Merlin, who's a soft, squishy Arcanist, so they want to kill him. With upgrades, we're bringing that cost down to 1. We grant it a Chill Aura for a little bit of offensive CC placement. We give it 50% dodge to try and waste more enemy attacks on it, and we're reducing the cooldown by 1. Next is Teleport. Very simple spell, he just appears within range for a low cost. With the upgrade, we're reducing the cost of it by 1, increasing the range of it by 2, and having him arrive hidden. And this is to keep him more safe because he is, after all, a frail old man. Going into tier 2, we have Raven Swarm. The damage on this ability isn't great, but it's not bad, and it is a great long-lasting dot but we're primarily taking it for the single target slow, as well as its low AP cost. None of these upgrades reduce the AP cost or the cooldown, so I didn't bother taking any of these. Mindfog, another low cost spell, noticing a theme here, which is great. It has a decent cooldown as well, and provides a good CC slash debuff. You target an enemy, and they spend their next attack on hitting the closest enemy. For you enemy, for them ally. They will even use AP to run at a target that may be further from you if that ally of theirs happens to be the closest target to them. This is a great way to waste their AP. And if they have a 50% mental debuff resistance, they instead become chilled. So either way, they're still getting some form of AP reduction. For upgrades, of course, taking the AP and cooldown reduction. We're increasing the range by two and I like giving it an extra debuff in the form of now it also applies weakness on the target. Now we finally get to the first offensive spell. Don't worry, with the level you recruit him at, he will start with this, and it's a really cool one. Fire Drake summons a Drake to perform a flyby and just spew flames down on enemies within a line. With upgrades, we're increasing its base damage, increasing the number of tiles that you can target from 5 to 7, this is really good for reaching spaced out targets to still get that multi-hit. Grant it the ability to apply burn, and this is the most important upgrade. And finally, it also applies vulnerability. The last T2 skill here is a passive you normally find on Sages, Mysticism. This is just an extra cooldown reduction for all of his skills once per turn if he gets a kill. This isn't super hard to do, so it is worth picking up. Getting into his tier 3, we have another offensive spell, Falling Star. This is a very AP expensive move at 8 AP. It provides high damage in a 3x3 area, essentially making it a harder hitting Fire Blast. With upgrades, we grant it the Burn Condition, increase its initial damage on the center target, 
apply knockdown on the center target for some CC, and reduce its cooldown. I generally prefer to use Fire Drake as my initial burn setter because it's cheaper, but sometimes that next turn comes around and Fire Drake's still on cooldown and you need to apply burn. Other times, enemies just group up in a way that's easier to get that larger multi hit with that standard 3x3 area. Moving on to his more unique passive, Master of Fire. This increases the weapon damage for fire skills, which is a lot of what he's doing. And he's got some really important passives that really boost that Summer Staff. The first one here is 30% weapon damage for burning effects, so that just means burn damage is hitting harder, plus an extra turn of burn duration, which means even more burn damage is getting lumped into that sum total triggered by the Staff effect. Extra damage against burning targets. There's going to be a lot of burning going around, so this will get some mileage, mostly on bosses. And another cooldown reduction for fire skills when you get a kill. Merlin can really just churn out these spells. And last but not least, we have Pyromania for a gigantic 50% burning damage. Now I know that was a lot to go over in his skill tree because he has a very unique skill tree and a lot of it is being used for this build in different ways and forms. So let's not waste any more time and just get to the gameplay. We're back in Three Sisters. I'm sure this is a familiar looking fight. You can see I've already had the first round go by so we can have him start moving in, get into some positions to start laying down some hits for the burn. Now for Merlin, the whole key is hitting that wild magic proc after we've set burn conditions. So we got a nice group of three here, so we're going to put a falling star on them. I had cast illusion the turn before, so you can check the wild magic if you mouse over this icon here. We need to cast six more spells. That shouldn't be too difficult. We have enough AP left over to do a fire drake, so let's set the burn on them. And now we're just going to start throwing some spells around on the rest of our units to try and hit that four more spell requirement. Blessings. Your orders. Alright, I think it should be procking here soon. The tracking is a little wonky sometimes. And there you go. Just like that. 600 damage, 300 and I think 70 damage that was. Just instantly dead. Now all we got is two little archers and one of these... What is this, Springborn? We'll go ahead and wrap these up and uh, we'll go ahead and move on to another target with maybe a bit more health. I'm throwing this clip in here, just uh, something I forgot about actually when I was uh, setting up this video. The uh, wild magic counter does not reset between fights. So any spells you cast in one fight and you don't necessarily hit that eight spell limit, you go into the next fight, you only need to cast like two spells due to the counter from the last one. Well, you're going to be hitting that proc really early in the next fight. As you can see here, this one is saying just one more spell needs to be cast. So I'll go ahead and show an interaction with this. If it sh says one more spell needs to be cast, the proc will not apply on that max spell. So for example here, if I, uh, I don't have enough AP for it this turn, so I'll wait till next turn. But you'll see, oh, it jumped up to seven. Okay. Um, that's what I was talking about a bit earlier. The tracking on it can be a little wonky. I'll try and set up a scenario though in this fight to show what I was just talking about, how casting a spell that would apply burning on what would be the triggering spell doesn't combo into it. Two. All right, so our third one here, we'll do Fire Drake. That was three. Uh, this track, like we showed earlier, this tracker is a little off. You'll see now, because that spell that would have triggered wild magic applied burning, 
the trigger for wild magic happens before the burning is then applied. So make sure you take that into account for when you're trying to set up this combo. You see now, we uh, cast illusion here. All right, it's at eight because of uh, that wonky tracking. So just thought this would be a good example to help show you how to not accidentally mess up the combo. Here we have the Fomorian mini-boss from the Three Sisters mission, titled the Fair Maiden. We're just going to let Merlin do his thing on this one, and these guys will just be casting some spells to help trigger that wild magic. We even have a fresh counter, so you can see how quickly we can hit this, not that it wasn't already very apparent from the first mission. Just going to open up with the burn. That, all on his own, already burned through four spells. You can see how easy this is to trigger, even if it was just on his own. To grant him a little bit of AP and just some other spellcasting members, this is nothing. To trigger this on first turn, no issue whatsoever. No mercy for the wicked. 593. Sorry, I wasn't a little more centered on that, but... 593. Look at how much health he's missing already. And this wild magic, you'll notice my Luke in here, he has cleansing fire, which applies burn. This burn effect counts, too. It's not just the burn effects Merlin sets. All burning effects will benefit from this wild magic trigger. The game does not differentiate who casts them. And there you can see the crowd control Merlin has. It's not great for hitting a lot of targets like a Morgana doing mass chills or maybe a Morgoth with her chain lightning. But he's very solid at locking down singular targets with the slow and the chill. It's... Really easy. You just put up another illusion for this guy, and he'll basically be stuck here in the corner. Because of the chill and the slow, he'll never have enough AP to actually come at us, so he'll just be spending on hitting the one illusion I put in front of him every turn. At this point, I'm just trying to trigger the next wildfire and shit some giggles. So, as you can see, Merlin, with this absolutely insane staff, is nuts. Just 500 fire damage per target, easily dotting up 3 plus targets for 1500 or more damage. It's just ridiculous numbers, and it's so easy to do given Wild Magic counts all spells for the team, and his ability to pretty much hit half of the Wild Magic requirement on his own, on the first turn. This combo is just absolutely busted, and if you get this, you can really just have Merlin carry you through a lot of really difficult encounters. Especially on the higher difficulties with the larger health pools, you'll really be feeling this impact. Now that being said, I understand that this build does feel kinda cheesy, and I wouldn't be surprised if they nerf this in some form at some point in the future. So if you liked what you saw here, just found it really cool or really fun, wanna play with it yourself, I wish you the best of luck in your search for the coveted Summer Staff Room. If you do manage to pull this off in your runs, uh, let me know in the comments how it goes for you. It's just so absurd, it's funny and fun by extent. I don't use it a whole lot, but it, it is satisfying to use it in spurts. Anyways, if uh, you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.